Mm. But geez, you, uh, you go there at a difficult time, Toddy. <coughs> so post Thurston era, you know, grand final, of course, 2017, 2018, 13th, 2019, 14th, 2020, Greeny resigns and they finish 14th. When you arrive, what, what type of shape was the club in and what was, how were the players, how were they affected by the previous seasons? Yeah. I think the club was in good shape. Like, everything from me up, commercially, and, you know, we've got a new stadium, we've got a new facility. You know, the governance of the club is is, is strong. Um, yeah, but as far as the playing group, I think they had some old scars that, we, that cut deep. And um, if I look back, we probably focused on um, the wrong parts of our game. Um, we try to be a fast-moving team rather than um, actually educating them how to play the game properly. And that's what we focused on the last, you know, the back end of the last year and um, all pre-season long. Yeah, that must be tough to be able to, to not be reactive when you're not getting the results mm. and go, no, we're going to play the long game here. Similar to what Sheens did, I suppose, with you Tigers boys. Mm. That, that first season, that Toddy, difficult. 15th, were, were there any times that you were laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, going, oh, I've made the wrong decision here? No, no, I, I never felt like that ever. Um, I did lay in bed and stare at the ceiling a lot. Um, I'd question, questioning whether, whether we were giving them too much information, whether we're trying to train them too hard or too little, questioning our methods, not not our ability and, you know, I'd question whether we're asking them to do things that they're not capable of doing. Were you? Um, at the time, physically and mentally, yeah, absolutely. But I'd watch the good teams at the top end of the competition and th the things that they were able to do consistently, um, I just knew we had to keep pushing them and that's what we did. You said, you know, you're very direct. You just, it's one thing you learned from Ricky to be direct. Tell it like it is. The best players want that. The thing that drew a lot of publicity and discussion it was a press conference and called out Jason, Jason Tamalolo. For anyone to stay on the park in the middle of the field like Jace does, you're gonna cut corners somewhere and it comes in your defensive movements, your retreat speed, your line speed. And if we let Jace get away with that, the young forwards that we have in, the, in our club think that's the way you defend. What effect did that have on the relationship? Any effect at all? Did, did you have to mend it a little bit? Um, no, so Jace knew how I operated. I learned a few things from it, right? So I shouldn't have come out at the start of the season and said, we're going to shorten his minutes. I should have kept that in-house. And then the forum that I that I said, well, that's the reason why we're, we're shortening his minutes, so we can make those efforts. I put pressure on the kid. And did our relationship suffer? I don't think it did, because we were still continuing to talk, but I the continued pressure that he was under, that's what I regret, you know? And that, that storyline still going up until round four this year, really, until we started to Did win. You start really. Yeah. Winning souls, a lot of those people. Yeah, it does. Todd, it started 2022. <clears throat> I'm thinking to myself, it's going to be another tough year for the Cowboys. Mm. I, I hear a lot of the players talk about the current success in this successful season. They, they talk about the pre-season. Mm. What, what, T tell me about that pre-season, what did you just do? Everyone has, they train hard. Everyone trains hard, so that's a given. Through our review, um, we looked at, the, I'm talking about the coaches' review, when we sit down at the end of the season and discuss, you know, what parts of our program we can improve, how do we improve as a football team. We watched all the tries that we conceded, which was not fun to view, you know, and a lot of those, I think it was about 60% of those that come from missed tackles that should have been made, or guys not competing enough. We conceded the most tries from kicks in the competition, and that affected our headspace in games. You know, we defend two sets, and then, you know, from a guy not getting their job done or someone not competing hard enough, we'd, we'd concede a try. And from there, we were losing games in periods, and we felt that our players, if we gave them a task or, you know, the, the game was flowing and had a good rhythm, they were OK. But as soon as something upset the rhythm or went against them, uh, we didn't have the mental or physical capacity to, to, to get on with the job and 
dive back into the game, and that's where our pre-season was built around. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. Built around sweat. No, uh, it's just toughness. built around upsetting the rhythm in different ways, you know? Doing things that they weren't expecting to do at different times and causing a little bit of chaos and seeing how they handled it, and we got better as the season pre-season went on. Who led the way? At uh, different moments, a lot of different players led, led the way. I thought the senior guys were really good, but then we've got a group of competitors that they're just tough kids, you know, Ruben Cotter, Tom Gilbert, Tom Dearden, you know, Chad was really invested right from the very start. And Pat Hiku turned up, um, took a while to adjust to the heat, but he got going. Um, and Maka, Jordan McLean, um, you know, he's just a physical beast in the in the contact room, so he set the tone there. You mentioned Tommy Dearden there, and I think everyone's yep. really happy to see him going good. I mean. The Broncos, one minute they had him as an external lane, and the next minute they're letting him go. What, what, when he arrived at the Cowboys, um, how was his mental space? Yeah, he was a shell of a person. I've got to say, he was um, nervous and second guessing himself, whether it was you know, on or off the pitch. Um, but I, what I did like about him was the way he trained. He's, you know, super competitive. Um, he's really professional um, and playing footy means something to him, you know, like he's wanted to play NRL since he was a kid and you can see that in the way that he goes about it. The importance of a, an experienced playmaker, we've seen it with Reynolds, the Broncos, you took Chad Towns in there, he's playing the best football of his career. To have an experienced seven, you know, the bloke who takes your ideas onto the park and make it, make it work, how much power do you give Chad? All of it. <laughs> he is taking the pressure off of Tommy. Um, he's taking the pressure off Drinky. So Drinky last year, he was our main focal point in attack and he felt like he had to come up with big plays all the time. And what he's done well this year is he hasn't had to do that and he's made some really smart decisions with the ball in his hands. He's taking the pressure off our middle forwards because they know what he wants from you know, he's very strong and decisive with his and clear with his talk and his direction out in the park. And he knows his strengths and doesn't really deviate from them too often. And he understands the strengths of his footy team too and he, he plays to those. So, mate, he's had a profound effect on us as a club on and off the pitch. We've been drawing a few similarities or comparisons between the 2005 Tigers, but another thing you've got in common is the emergence of all these great young players simultaneously and heading towards their peak years together. Tell me about Ruben Cotter. The flying mullet. Um, he's from Serena. He's come through our pathway system, so everyone's starting to see the Ruben Cotter that we've known he could be for a long time. Mate, he's a tough kid, super fit. He has had some challenges with injury up until this time. He's had two knee reconstructions. He's had a shoulder problem. He's had a Liz Frank reconstruction. Um, so he's had to do it the hard way and we stuck with him at probably times where I think other clubs might have, you know, maybe two or three years ago when he had his second knee injury. But we knew the type of competitor he was. Yeah, he just fits the bill of what we're about as a club, you know. Um, North Queensland kid competes and works really hard. Now, I know it's difficult because, you know, we're starting to get towards the most important part of the year. So you it's hard to really wrap players too much. Mm. I suppose, let's do something different. You asked me what I think of Jeremiah Nanai. <laughs> and Matty, he, yes. What do you think of Jeremiah Nanai? I think he's phenomenal. I've really seen a player with so many gifts and such great instincts for the game. Is that accurate? Yeah, spot on. Yeah. Um, there are some technical parts of his game that he needs to adjust, but he just finds himself in the right place a lot of the times and he's got terrific hand-eye coordination, anticipation, he's brilliant in the air and I think us as a team we can build some more plays and shapes around him with his hands and soft touch so that's, a, that's an improvement for us and him. When you watch uh, the State of Origin series and seeing so many of your young players sort of come of age and have great series. Do you get emotional watching that? I did. In the last one, I had a couple of beers under the belt, and um, 
When I saw Tommy Dean run out and smile, like before kickoff, um, that wasn't the part I got emotional, but I, I was just, I knew he was, he was good to play. Um, he was relaxed. Um, but when he set up Val for that first try. Hunt down the short side. Here's Dearden at the line. Holmes! He bursts through! And the fact that he went after the game. Yeah, I was a bit of a proud dad, proud dad moment, you know. Um, not just for him, but for Val and um, even Tommy Gilbert getting on after two minutes. And Jeremiah after his first couple of games, he, he really stood up and had some really classy moments and some, you know, couple of moments where they impacted the game you know, in a good way. This, this terrific season at the Cowboys, who's who's someone I haven't spoken about? Who's the unsung hero, Toddy? Um, oh, I think Robbo, Reese Robson. Um, Scotty Drinkwater come in after four rounds. Um, he's made a difference to us. Um, and then, you know, so we've got some middle forwards there just plying their trade and just getting the job done. Across the team, what I like about us as a team at the moment is that how selfless we are and the fact that we're willing to do whatever the team needs. I read at the start of the season, you sit down there, I'm not going to ask you what those goals were. It's personal to the team, but you had to set certain goals, whether that be top eight, top four, I don't know, but the last couple of weeks, have you had to screw them and throw it away? Because, I mean, you're in a position now to win the whole thing. Yeah, um... Or oh, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago, we had a, a conversation around the opportunity that's in front of us. We spoke about how hard it is to get where we are at the moment, and all we have is an opportunity, and it doesn't happen all the time. So we need to make sure that we give ourselves to the team and give ourselves to the game, and give ourselves every opportunity to make sure we can capitalise on what's in front of us. Good luck. Congratulations again, Toddy. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers.